Welcome everybody. This is um, a great day, which we start with a great interview. Um, another pre-talk to the Knowledge Festival, once again from 16th to 22nd of uh, August. And for all of the researchers, professionals, um, medicine experts, um, if you have any papers, we're still on call for papers, so send them in. Go to the website, uh, knowledgefestival.org. You find all the links um, down there. So now today we have uh, Professor Dr. Narayanan Nambi. So he's, uh, as, as we say, not only a, a simple Ayurvedic doctor, he's uh, uh, Ashtavaidian, so he has a great background um, of um, a generational knowledge of, of Ayurveda. Um, now he is presently the principal and she, uh, chief physician of uh, Ashtamgam Ayurveda and Chikitsalayam uh, and uh, Vidya Pidam at the Ayurveda Medical College and Hospital in, uh, in Kotanat. Um, in Kerala. He's also honorary director of um, academic and clinical services of SNA. Um, Ushada Sala, founded by uh, Ashtavaidian uh, Trisur Taikat Mus in 1920 in Kerala. He received uh, BAMS, Ayurveda. Uh, Acharya degree from Mysore University in Karnataka, um, MD degree from uh, Rajiv Gandhi University of uh, Health Sciences in, in Bangalore in Karnataka. He's pursuing PhD in Ayurveda from SVSVMC University uh, in Tamil Nadu. He has been contributing in the field of Ayurveda education, research, pharmaceutics, and healthcare policy matters in India and abroad since 20 years. He is popular in international teaching schools as faculty member of Ayurvedic Point Italy, Equal International Australia, and Veda education in Russia. He's also actively involved in Ayurveda education through European Institute of Vedic Studies, Switzerland and European Academy of Ayurveda, Germany and made educational visits and orations in Italy, Germany, France, Netherlands, Austria, Switzerland, Estonia, UAE and United Kingdom. Uh, he has also made valuable contribution as the coordinator in scientific program of Indra Europe. So that's the International Network of Development and Research in Ayurveda, former member of subcommittee uh, for education and international cooperation for Ayush for 12 um, for the 12 five year plan in National Planning Commission uh, government of India, former member, um, secretary of the clinical services, a council for international cooperation of Indian system of medicine under department of Ayush, uh, under ministry of health and family welfare for the government of India, former member of subcommittee in, uh, some, Pitroda Global Ayurveda Initiative under Kerala State Council for Science, Technology and Environment, uh, also government of uh, Kerala. He repre uh, represents the rich ancestry uh, Alatyur Nambi family of Ashtavaidyas, the great traditional uh, Vaidya families in India having centuries of old tradition. By recognizing his contribution and valuable services in Ayurveda education, he was honored with uh, Ashwini Award in 2011 by uh, Padma Pusan, uh, Bhushan uh, Shri D. Uh, Virendra uh, Hegade at SDM Institute. His regular presentation in Amruta TV, uh, Jivatara, 
uh, program for more than a decade made him very popular figure in the state as public speaker and as a star orator rooting to tradition. So now you know we have a great man here uh, who will be talking about um, something that might be interesting to many uh, listeners and viewers. Um, and um, we will now uh, give it over to his presentation. And uh, I hope you have a lot of fun. So. Am I audible very clearly? Yes, you're you're perfectly audible. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, long uh, introduction. Maybe a little bit uh, too lengthy for the audience to hear. Anyhow, uh, you know, it's some time to have a long introduction. Make me make people a little bit oh, okay. Uh, it's a very the right time. People come together in a very different platforms and share their knowledges between because we are undergoing in an, a time, a time of pandemic where how this traditional wisdom can be utilized in the right way. It is also very fortunate for every country to look back its own traditions look back its own culture, look back its own inheritance, how they survived in a different say, healthy challenges and what are the things they made from the local health traditions. So I deeply appreciate the initiations made by the whole team, the knowledgefestival.org team, for nowadays with the online platform, it's a great opportunity for the people all over the world to look into different knowledges and share knowledges and how we can proceed further. I have been asked to speak about an important disease, uh, thyroid dysfunctions. And uh, this could be a very interesting area because uh, all over the world, there are a lot of people are really suffering from this disease. Uh, most of the time, when people speak about different diseases of uh, endocrine gland, uh, often people will think about diabetes mellitus, which is by a large, a large population has been affected. But in reality, comparing to diabetes, there is another important disease that affect nowadays, especially due to so much of uh, metabolic activities. Thyroid disorders is another very common problem that uh, suffered by the people all over the world and some of the data says that in India there are around 42 million people and even it may be more. Another interesting fact about this disease is that by a large it is a it is a, a disease that affecting to the woman especially in the uh, middle to the last part of their life especially near premenopausal and all. But as a clinician, as I am a practicing endocrinology, I found the other side of the thing is that when we have thyroid problem in the woman, actually it is much more easier to treat compared to the men. So when statistics says there are a large number of people affect this disease, but in other side, when we have a disease in a men, is a little more challenging. And another interesting thing that the thyroid gland has many problems, maybe thyroid, like hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, and one among the most common one is hypothyroidism. Uh, it is, nowadays, I think people doesn't need any introduction to know what is this disease, because it's uh, everybody knows about thyroid dysfunctions. 
and everybody have many idea about this problem because it's very simple that uh, in our body just like if we have a mobile we need a very good battery to perform all its functions whether it may be uh, working a social media in the mobile whether it may be a game whether it may be uh, very uh, audio discussions going on we need a very good battery which could deliver the system very well exactly the same we have a battery something like we can imagine like a battery of a mobile we have a gland called thyroid which is situated in the neck and this gland is very important for uh, keeping our battery our body's metabolic need or energy need delivery but it's not really directly uh, linked to the gland because this gland has some superior other person that is a, a pituitary gland the anterior part of the pituitary gland uh, which stimulates this gland to uh, produce the proper uh, thyroid and above that to control all these things we have a hypothalamus also so when this uh, hypothalamus and pituitary and thyroid work together uh, we have a, a necessity uh, we our body will utilize this energy so hypothalamus will say that uh, if there is a need uh, if there is a need then you may please uh, uh, you may please uh so that you may please uh, what do you say uh, produce the hormone in the right time then uh, thyroid from hypothalamus then pituitary will do release a hormone called thyroid releasing or thyroid stimulating hormone from there the pituitary gland and uh, in a clinical setup the other story is important uh, because in the status of the clinical setup we have different type of people comes in our clinic with a thyroid and most of the time it's not diagnosed directly in the context like uh, we clinician may diagnose nowadays people are also aware a lot about uh, thyroid dysfunction so what they do they just go to a hospital or they just go to a lab and try to check the thyroid level and find something went wrong so they will check it and they will say okay my tsh is slightly high what should i do uh, they may approach to a clinician what shall i do that's one set of people already self diagnosed and they come to an ayurvedic clinician too uh, generally they may go to a modern medical doctor also to a directly to an ayurvedic physician depends upon how we have a relationship with the patient second uh, team is that second type of category of people is that when people have already have some thyroid dysfunctions uh, they already taking the levothyroxine the drug and they found even after taking this drug they have some symptom they have hair loss they have body pain and that thing so they may think that maybe it's not the right thing that i simply take levothyroxine and keep going maybe i may need some supportive things maybe i may use some alternative knowledge systems like ayurveda or other things through which i could able to reduce the symptoms something like that so people will approach in that way another category of people is that they already taking thyroxine they and when they ask to meet a medical doctor uh, once in a six months or something doctor say now your metabolism is not as good as before so maybe i have to increase the dose okay now you are taking 50 mcg you now take 75 mcg and then they will ask a doctor what shall i do uh, with this drug so doctor will say maybe you have to take this drug for life long so patient may be what i have to take this drug for life long do i have any alternative options generally no so they have a they have they, the patient as from a person perspective they will start thinking do we have any alternative options whether uh, if i do regular yoga or meditation something am i able to reduce this dose do we have any diet corrections and lifestyle corrections and some herbs like ayurvedic systems which can recommend so in this way there are different type of calls we may call for help i should say they will come to ayurvedic fraternity for and they are looking they may looking for a, a promising management sometimes they may expect a complete recovery from it sometimes some people may have a 
expectation just to reduce the symptom it's again depends upon how the chronic problem depends upon the problem is so what i was speaking is that uh, this is the situation people will come so we have fresh cases or other cases other thing uh, the biggest uh, demand from the people is that they are looking for an alternative choice because they don't want to take a drug which could be dependent to the life long and they will seek for ayurvedic help and we clinician will be in a little bit trouble why because uh, first of all they will come up with some uh, some uh, unusual questions first question is that they will ask ayurvedic fraternity do you have uh, any uh, disease in ayurveda called hypothyroidism so we'll say no no we don't have any disease like something like hypothyroidism uh, so first question is no do you have any method to to analyze this condition yes we have because uh, people have a notion that uh, what is described in ayurveda is uh, that for every problem in the society do we have an answer in the book yes we have answer in the book but they are they are in the clue or they are in a codified form so if there are people comes with a joint pain i i say oh, there is a chapter called uh, vatarakta or a chapter which explains about joint disorders but don't expect in that chapter all the diseases that describes in the whole world it cannot happen at all but there are enough references in a sufficient information on which we build up the the knowledge on which we could able to practice ayurveda so this is also apt for the thyroid dysfunctions in ayurveda definitely we will be able to understand what it is we will be able to uh, evolve the pathological uh, thing we will be able to give proper instructions for the management so the uh, since the ayurvedic textbook doesn't describe uh, the way what we are expecting but there are a lot of clue through which we could be able to understand we could be able to analyze these things of course as a we all know uh, that uh, thyroid gland is a very vital uh, gland which is uh, releasing the t3 and t4 that is the tri triiodothyroxine and tetraiodothyroxine two major hormones which is basically just like a battery uh, which is a major energy source so uh, it regulates our basic metabolic rate glucose catabolism lipid metabolism or uh, protein synthesis many 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 things so there is a, a a feedback mechanism too for example suppose if i do a, a trekking in himalayas definitely i may need a lot of energy i may be walking around 30 or 40 kilometers in a day so my body need lot of energy so thyroid gland immediately will uh, start secreting more and more but after the trekking if i come back uh, to my hometown uh, it's very near to the sea side and uh, maybe i doesn't need that much of energy i may be a little bit sedentary then thyroid gland has to identify detect this so what happens is that from the cell there is a feedback mechanism goes to the uh, anterior pituitary and goes to the hypothalamus says okay now dr nambi is back to home stops uh, reduce secreting otherwise there is a problem so a physiological thing is very very important that happens in the thyroid gland very oftenly it is a very very crucial thing to identify in the clinical practice too and from an ayurvedic perspective uh, ayurveda understand every problem in the framework of uh, tridosha and the vada pitta kapha and in that dosha also we have each dosha is categorized into five based on the compositional variations and location and functions so from a hypothalamus pituitary to the whole area we could say there is an involvement of pranavata that is located in the brain and so it's related with hypothalamus and pituitary then comes the udana vata which is which is uh, closer to the thyroid gland from there the vyana vata that which takes the whole hormone to the whole area through cellular areas and delivering to each and every thatus in ayurveda we have seven thatus obviously there is also a negative feedback mechanism even an ayurveda says that a feedback mechanism for example one vata get disturbed 
then the other vada will get support so that feedback mechanism maintains this so primarily the pathological things happen in this disease is there is an alteration in the functions of vata almost all the subdoshas are indirectly or directly involved again uh, why this happening is that again there is above the vata there is something that regulates the pata or vata regulates something is called manas or the mind uh, so they are like uh, mutually uh, shareable thing so manas has a great role to play i'll come to that point so what happened due to different pathological reasons there may be enough reasons in a person's life uh, that uh, that produces different etiological factors which is in ayurveda called nidana which is etiological factors and a change in kapha dosha also happening vata alteration happening and there is a kapha alteration is also happening because they have some mutually opposite gunas many of the gunas because of that again there is a problem of agni there is a change in the digestion and metabolism according to ayurveda because once we have an alteration of vata but two important pathologies happens one pathology is there is a disturbance of the mind second there is a disturbance of the agni or the digestive fire so there is a disturbance of the digestive fire when we have a disturbance in the digestive fire there are high chance to have indigestion or improper digestion which in turn produce another pathological constituent we call in ayurveda called ama that is something undigested which is not really cooked or which is not which is not really well uh, changed according to the need of the body so there is a slow and slow accumulation of ama in the gut from that ama that may go to normally this when there is a ama body will try to push it out either maybe uh, through the bowel movement or through urine there are enough methods body know how to push it out but it doesn't happen sometimes so what it does body have only two options either to push it out or diffuse it out so if it is pushed okay let it go if it is not pushed then it has to be diffused so it may be taken to different thadus and uh, localized different different areas maybe rasa rakta varava and that way this will lodge in a different different area and oh, we have ama in the whole different different areas slowly so we can see there are symptoms of ama aggravated uh, presentations in most of the thyroid dysfunction cases uh even each each and every symptom what we see in the thyroid dysfunction people can be beautifully understand based on which dosha and which channels are there so in ayurveda this ama carrying channels so the channels the ama is carried to different channels and different channels may be challenged this is very very uh, interesting observations so if we look at the symptoms of uh, the hypothyroidism for example hypothyroidism there may be fatigue or loss of energy maybe lethargy sleeplessness so there are different different set of symptoms what we see and can be really correlated with a certain involvement of a dosha for example joint pain definitely there is an increase of vata hair loss okay there is an increase of vata like that there are uh, initially it may start with a simple symptomatology but later on it can it can produce uh, more complicated symptoms or more deep uh, deep disturbing symptoms and may end up with some uh, non reversible issues like a goiter like a nodular goiter etc so that is one thing so another part what we should see is that to identify this problem uh, in a clinical setup because many times this may be very very confusing a persons with the lyme disease in the europe a lot of people have this condition called lyme disease often have very similar symptoms of anama so they say they have some fatigue they said no no they found some uh, lack of energy they have hair loss they have some mood fluctuations so this may also mimic uh, this also vitamin d deficiency nowadays for example due to covid many people are inside the house they are not permitted to go out 
So they're not really exposing to the uh, sunlight. So they'll have a problem with the vitamin D deficiency, also have a similarity. And anemia, also another common, or obstructive sleep apnea. Nowadays, it, this disease is also very, very common. Uh, especially in the COVID period, a lot of people are, unfortunately, they are not able to go to gym. They are not self-motivated to do some fitness activity inside the house. And of, obviously, in the house, eating will be a little bit more. And a lot of accumulation of kappa, a lot of accumulation of ama. At the end of the day, they'll have some sleep apnea and other issues. So there are a set of things we see nowadays in the clinical practice with a different diagnosis. Signs and symptoms, obviously, very, very simple. If battery of our mobile is not working, we know what happens. The phone will become fatigued. Phone, become, <laughs> phone is not able to perform. Phone will have uh, not able to transfer data properly. Similar way, it will produce fatigue, weakness, muscle cramps, edemas in a different part of the body, including menorrhagia. That means different type of bleedings and uh, type in the woman, etc. It's very, very common thing to be identified and we can treat it with nice. Why this is happening? Because it is a link between thyroxine and Agni. At this context of uh, COVID period, where we are speaking about immunity, this point is very, very vital. Okay, as Varun has mentioned that uh, we have to, it is a very, very right time when we are asked not to go out. We are, we have been, we have to ask to go inside. It's a very right time. We are, we were working outside, working, doing so many activities. When country says, when health people says, we don't, we are not supposed to go out. It's a very right time, we let us go inside. If we get one week of time, then let's this one week improve our 10 percentage of our immunity better. Let our Agni become better. Let our Ama become least. This could be very, very vital. It depends upon the different countries, different climates. Possibilities of things are different, but idea is very common. If we have Agni goes wrong, so there is a low metabolism, there is a low energy, low heat, and in contrary, we may accumulate a lot of ama. So in the thyroid dysfunctions, we have ama, we have kapha dosha, and we also have a medo dosha problem. So we can see a lot of, uh, we, if we look at the symptoms of the thyroid, uh, we can see there are people with a lot of kapha increased, kapha vritti, that is, and also the fat deposit in change, also the tamoguna, you know, nowadays the tamas, the people are really depressed, hopeless, helpless. But I should say, uh, we are, uh, we should not think that uh, hopeless, helpless. Uh, we should not feel useless. I should say used less <laughs> instead of useless because we are not used our body properly. It is the right time whenever in our life, uh, we are not really uh, truly speaking, we are not really explored our inner potentials. So when we get time, it's a very right time. Let us retrospect. Am I able to increase my Agni very well? Am I able to reduce my Ama the least? Am I able to boost my immunity at the best? These are the to-do list of a person that day. From there we start definitely there are a lot of changes, a lot of changes that can really bring in everybody, everybody's life. Definitely in this COVID period and all, I'm, I'm very sure that a lot of people had disturbance of thyroid because there are a lot of challenges in the metabolism. So when people are taking initiations to do things, okay, I do exercise every day. People will think that, okay, I will do some exercise every day because it's the right time that I could stay with my family, my wife, children, so I could do a family yoga. So like that, there are a lot of possibilities when we are inside. So, so for thyroid is concerned, there is also an increased symptoms of kapha. Kapha dosha symptoms like lethargy, somnolence you know, showing physical, uh, slowing of physical activities and even mental activity. Many times people will say, doctor, I'm getting these days, I'm losing my memory. 
why are you losing memory uh, they'll say no 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 i don't know maybe i have some metabolism disturbance okay let us check it so like that so what we do we try to correct their agni and the memory become better so there are a lot of symptoms like weight gain a lot of people will say doctor i put on weight but when when we really look check their body weight in the scale it doesn't change but doctor i feel uh, there's a change so it's a dependent it's nothing but there is a water retention in the body uh, because of the agni is poor then there is a possibility of lot of water stay some different part of the uh, body so we have to address that also definitely the tamo guna the tamas is a, a very bad thing that can uh, that can people can affect obviously you know people when people feels that okay i am very depressed i know these days i don't know what to do i have um, i have you know, many many challenges in the life okay sure there are challenges if there is whenever we are living in this world we have challenges it's like a ship when we prepare a, a make a ship it is very safe for the ship to bind in the bind in the uh, the place where ship can stay safe but ship is made for made for to journey so when ship is moving in the water there are there are waves up coming there are climatical change there are challenges because it is made for that so some similar way our body is made for that only thing it is our conscious way of tuning with outside the internal that is the point to be remembered when climate change outside how we are how conscious we are to tune our inner side if the in every area it is not that we keep only our health and let other people do or let other things do no we have only one health we are becoming one universe and we are becoming one health what i want to say is that we cannot keep our healthy without keeping others healthy around others not only include human being it may be animals plants everything in and around us if a plant got some disease in my garden it is not a disease of uh, a plant it is something to do with me too today or tomorrow i should take care of it i should try to understand what is happening i should take care of it this attitude this selfless attitude definitely is highly essential for the new world post covid world otherwise we will not we will have a big big problem because we never think that okay i am healthy i am doing exercise i am eating very good food sorry it is not enough okay that may be short period you may gain but a longer period definitely each and every component in and around us living including non living things if they are in the right position right balance then we are inside that this is a great difference of india in india we say is that our story start from uh, forest because many of the indian stories are starts in the forest mahabharata ramayana there are a lot of stories in the forest the speciality of the forest is that you cannot fight with the forest and live there there is only option you are just among one among the millions of creatures inside so we have the possibility that you stay inside the forest alone you try to understand the forest and live not you are not you cannot conquer the forest you cannot fight with the forest then you will be died because there are so many animals sharper than you there are so many creatures better than you there are so many things stronger than you so you have no options burn your ego stay there try to understand the limitations try to tune with it survive that is why all our indian epics mahabharata ramayana all all the epics we have a story of living in the forest because that's the way how we we humans has to inculcate the forest is not only story they are all the representation of human race how they have to live anyhow i'm a little bit sorry i'm a little bit deviating from the point of what i supposed to speak but maybe <laughs> that's the thing to be told in time uh, so so far the hypothyroidism is concerned um Uh, the symptoms also many times it may mimic uh, with uh, 
many other symptoms like uh, muscle cramps. Uh, uh, this is very crucial. You know, uh, there is a difference uh, between a menopause syndrome versus thyroid disease. Many times it looks very similar, especially a woman of 45 years, they come to clinic and complain that I have some uh, aches, I have some hair loss. Maybe it's very common that it can happen also in menopause. So what to do? There are this very specific ways we could be able to identify. And now comes the management. Definitely, the management should start from inside. First thing that, try to correct our Agni as good as possible, as strong as, as possible. Burn out the Ama as much as possible. It is not always possible to completely burn out, obviously. But whenever we get a chance to burn out, definitely try to burn Ama. At least not to accumulate Ama too much. Then Kapha and Medas, address the Kapha and Medas properly. And there are enough methods. We have enough, there are a lot of yogasanas are there, which may be helpful reducing the Kapha and Medas. And uh, there are some simple measures I use in our Ayurvedic practice. One is Upavasa, the fasting. Fasting is a very good method. If it is a beginning of the thyroid dysfunction, if somebody goes for a proper fasting, definitely it can improve. That is maybe the reason why, that's the reason why in all over the world, every religion has a, a story of fasting. In Muslims, in the Ramzan, one month they go for fasting. And in Christianity, before uh, Easter or even before Christmas, there are some, at least not full fasting, maybe some dietical, dietical manipulation to burn out Ama and to improve that thing. In Hindu religion, definitely we have so many uh, repeated times like Egadashi, 11th day, there are 6th day, there are even more uh, different perception. This all, every religion has this idea that burn your Ama and ignite your Agni. That's all, everywhere. That this is a very crucial thing. That may be the reason why olden time these thyroid dysfunctions were very, very less. And also we have, we may use some uh, different treatments in Ayurveda, like Udvartana, powder massage all over the body. Even a simple thing somebody can do every day in life is that simply you add, drink ginger water every day. Hot ginger water or lukewarm ginger water every day. That itself is really value addition to any thyroid function, especially hypothyroidism. It doesn't mean hyper in hypothyroidism. This is very, very good. And we can, we may able to practice some of the treatments like nasya in the nose in an Ayurvedic lifestyle practices found very, very effective. I don't want to say too much of uh, technical aspect of it because it may be, there may be so many people, non-medical people may be hearing it, may be a little bit confusing for them of uh, so much of Sanskrit and complex things. But I was just putting the idea is that there are possibility to do that. In Ayurveda, we use a different type of decoctions. We use uh, different tablets like Google. Uh, formulas, uh, we use different powders, even geese. These are some of the examples, medicines we use, depends upon uh, a person's condition. There is nothing called a fixed prescription for any disease. Ayurveda always look for a person as a whole and try to understand a person in totally and to have a customized prescription, very much personalized and customized prescription for any condition. So these are some of the drugs I personally use, found very, very effective in our clinical practice, depend upon the situations. And another interesting thing, we were trying to do a vasti. As I mentioned in the beginning, uh, there are uh, cases where uh, people have long history, like 10 years or 15 years, they have thyroid dysfunctions and they want to get out of it. So the disease is very, very strong and this Agni problem are very, very deep. So at that situation, we use a particular type of vasti, that's the enema combination, what we use very specifically and given very, very effective. But of course, this need a hospitalization and long time observations and et cetera. There are specific set of medicine told in Ayurveda, it's called Varanadiganam, very, very specific set of uh, formula have very close relation with almost all the pathological presentations of thyroid. That's what I told in the beginning. 
we may not be able to get a specific disease directly same as that in our ayurvedic textbook but there are very interesting that when we keep on reading the formulas in uh, books there are uh, thousands of formulas in different books while we reading the formulas itself they say there are phalashruti that means they says that this disease is indicated for certain so and so uh, pathological condition while reading that we think oh so oh, this is that presentation what we seen in the last week clinical setup and all uh, and very importantly there are few things are to be highlighted those who are having thyroid dysfunction it is not ideal to have regular oil massages abhyanga is not very good even the milk products that is milk uh, yogurt these type of things is not very good because they have a this has a tendency to accumulate develop ama and they sleep it is absolutely it's not not at all good for the thyroid dysfunction people to have a day sleep and of course uh, there are other things also to be remembered in this context in a, in the clinical setup how we are uh, helping people to do this whether it is Uh, uh, we can classify the whole people into three category the first category of people those they come up in the clinic in our practice they come up in our uh, clinical setup they come with a fresh they have some problem they went for a self diagnosis and come up with the test report saying that i have tsh 25 t3 t4 is normal uh, do we start directly with ayurveda so we we make a note of it we explain them okay you see your tsh is high this means you have a hypothyroidism probably maybe also maybe some physiological thing we may repeat it again so anyhow let us start some deepana that means let us increase your agni so don't do this don't do this don't do this do this do this do this we have a list of things they should follow for a few weeks at least or uh, two three weeks or four weeks then we'll check it again what is the status of agni does they improve the agni does they arm burn the arm properly in this way if you are able if you are able to direct them within a few months itself definitely without the support of any modern medicines any levothyroxine anything absolutely we can stabilize this condition second category of people are already they are already taking the drugs and this type of people they are already have the drug and uh but they have the symptoms too this is because of the cellular resistance you know what happening is that thyroid is producing hormone but not necessarily that cell is really receptive to that there are a lot of resistance just like insulin resistance that happens in the diabetic people thyroid hormone also have a resistance normally t4 is by a large we see the t4 the tetrahydrothyroxine in the blood stream but this is not really receptive it loses one iodine become t3 and that is more utilizable form get into the cell and do things but what happens due to different lifestyle and other thing there are cellular resistance to improve cellular resistance important thing is i doing exercise properly so one of the important thing there are other methods also one of the important thing is to have a regular time limited strongly agni stimulating exercise are vital so that's a thing so what we recommend is that okay they are saying doctor i am taking already 50 mcg of levothyroxine but i have hair loss i am putting on weight there are so many things okay don't stop this take these medicines do this do this we have list of things definitely they will find initially that there is absence of symptoms in a very quickly then over a period we can taper down this medicines maybe in a few months definitely we can stop it and the third group this is the chronic people that means already they are thyroid dysfunctions and they are maybe 10 years or 15 years they were looking for total withdrawal or partial withdrawal of the medicine at that situation maybe we start with the same protocol what i mentioned before but about that we may be ask them to get admitted in the hospital and we do more aggressive medical approaches and we can find very good results so these are some of the things i would like to share in this context and uh, um, at this occasion i dedicate to this to my father who has been inspiring me when i was uh, uh, when i was age of 7 or 8 
he pushed me, he used to take me to bedside, to clinical setup. So I was playing in my courtyard and when my father pushed me to his uh, clinical room, I was really disappointed to, disappointed. I was really feeling, oh, what my father is doing. But uh, that was also a, a very pleasant experience because people, I'll see patients crying, uh, complaining of the problem. Patient, some patients are touching my feet of my father taking blessings. Uh, some people are uh, uh, doing different expressions. And as a child, I was really confused. What is, what is happening here? Because people bring with a six months a year old small baby to the 90 year old guy, the whole cross section of the people, whole cross section of the society, irrespective of the politics, religion, caste and other things. And making a complex communications. As a small child, I was totally confused. So I was sitting and looking at this. Uh, so father would say, okay, take out the prescription. So he will say the prescription I have to write. I was also very fearful at that time to write prescriptions because, uh, you know, six years, seven years, we may make a lot of spelling mistakes. <laughs> so he may again may correct it. Uh, but when I become a, when I join in a medical school professionally, officially, I realized that he was really inspiring me. He was really taking me he was really conditioning me to become a Vaidya, to become a doctor. Even though I was really uh, hesitant at that time. When, when I start learning in the bedside in an institution, I realized that there is, this is so simple because I had already seen these situations. So at this moment, I really thankful to him. Uh, he was no more. He uh, passed away in 2015. Uh, so I dedicate my today's presentation to him because his ageless thoughts made me what I am. And uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak uh, at this occasion. And uh, if there is any question, I'll be very happy to answer. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. This was beautiful. It, uh, it was very interesting. So it, it kept... Uh, it kept me at least, uh, I, I believe everyone who, who uh, listened to it, who watched it, um, right in there, even uh, that it was, you know, very medical, very uh, professional. And um, I believe it's, it's a very in interesting introduction to the topic for um, even high level um, uh, medical, personal uh, of, of any kind of any system uh, but as I said also very interesting and and uh, full of um, the extra stuff that um, you said maybe it was uh, too much but I think it's it's just uh, also very important to to have this um, you know this kind of yogic uh, uh, basis of, of Ayurveda that, you know, if you're, if you're not in, in sync with everything around you, with the uh, humans, with nature, with, with the animals, with everything that is around you, then um, it's not really working the way you would want the whole thing to work. So it's about not only one gland to work, it's, it's about the life to work. And, and it, it, it got over beautifully. Uh, and I'm very uh, grateful for that. Um, we have a few questions. Some of them might have been uh, answered by now. So one of those was, um, so uh, people who are already taking uh, a medication for that, uh, is, there a, is there a way to slowly get out of it uh, I, I'm, uh, maybe maybe want to go for one or two sentences on that because I, I feel like you you just answered that a little bit but yeah uh, actually those who are already taking thyroxin there are possibilities that we can withdraw depends upon how much we are able to push that metabolism within them uh, in my practice uh, I, I was able to withdraw people from a period of three months to eight months. You know, there are uh, maybe a few hundreds of people we are treating simultaneously. 
So mm -hmm. as a cross section, I find that between around three to four months, many people may able to withdraw the half, then again half like that. In other side, maybe it took some people around even eight months to completely stop levothyroxine and switch on to Ayurveda. Then within a few months, we, we stop both medications. And what you told is very, very right that uh, what I want to say again, stress on to that point is that uh, whenever now we have a pandemic and uh, we are uh, discussing many things about the possibilities, but it's also very right time. We have to find for, look for a one health for, I mean, a one health for the global thing. Because th this is what the traditional knowledge system strongly make us to make us to think that because of course uh, only human beings have medical system that's the first logic we should think <laughs> no uh, no animals no plants no trees they don't have any medical system why they lack medical system because they have an inner wisdom they have at least they have some inner wisdom to survive uh, in somehow and they were able to they are still there surviving even sometime much better than us in many, many part of it. Secondly, uh, if we need a medical system, that medical should, system should be inclusive medical system, not the exclusive medical system. The biggest challenge now, even today, we are thinking that the enemy is outside. Okay, when we say COVID is 19, is these, these, whatever. Enemy is not outside. There are three things for a, a disease is to happen is that agent, host, and environment. Okay, we found some agent outside, but there are two other factors. That is the environment, and second is the host. Agent can come and go and come and go and come and go. But if our host is very good and very strong, agent cannot do anything. If the environment is not favorable to it, agent cannot survive. So always chasing only on agent is a stupidity. Of course, let us avoid the agent but it's also how equal importance should be given to improve a better environment, to have a better hostship of our internal environment. Without that, whatever we do, whatever we do absolutely may not come up with a long time results. We may have some short term result, definitely. But if we want to have a long time result, we need to have equal addressing of agent, host, as well as environment. But unfortunately, even today, we are not really addressing the host at all. Absolutely, that's uh, that's very good. But you know, it's probably the biggest part of the issue anyway. So uh, next one would be. Um, so uh, if we agree on. Um, and the issue that lifestyle is uh, a big part of the thyroid problem and um, and that is uh, even caused by that. So um, what is your take on stress and stress related um, conditions? So what role would stress play in, in, in the whole? Um, um, absolutely, because what I, that's what I mentioned before that we have an internal systems in Ayurveda, we say Tridosha system, which regulates everything. And there are enough competencies between these each other to be able to find minor balances between each other. Stress is part of our life. Anxiety is a part of our life, but it should have a threshold point. There's a point where it could limit. If it crosses beyond that, then only it produces the problem. So what makes it goes up? It goes up just because of our ego or there are any other thing, many other things creating the stress. So if we are able to identify that causative factor within ourselves, we may have a, a threshold, threshold point of stress for meeting our demands, meeting our requirements, it is fine. Even doshas have that turbulence in our internal system. That's absolutely fine. But at the end of the day, there should be a method by which we could be able to balance these things. This is beautifully mentioned in Ayurveda called Dhinacharya. 
Uh, in Ayurveda, it is called a daily regime recommended. When we look at into these, it looks very, uh, what is there in that taking bath regularly, I have some oil massage, putting a oil in the head. Looks very simple or sometimes looks very absurd. What to do, why to do these type of things. Maybe you think that looking at from the skin perspective or a cosmetic perspective, not like that. It's just like the way is that at the end of the day, the, all the turbulence has to be stabilized at the end of the day at least. Definitely for a living life, we have a lot of turbulences, we agree. But if at the end of the day, if you are able to stabilize <coughs> that turbulence in the least level, definitely in the next day become better. That's the point Ayurveda always recommends. Great. So um, just to add one more, uh, there is no, uh, or is there um, a sort of um, scale of levels of stress in Ayurveda where you say, okay, I mean, of course you can see some symptoms, be it as, as you just told in, in the skin or in, 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 in any uh, kind of functionality of the body, but is there something, some standard kind of thing that we could say, or is it just a personal um, issue? Who can take how much stress and like that? Absolutely. It depends upon the uh, person's constitution and situation. So, you know, uh, for example, a kapha pragrdi person, a kapha constitution person can have a higher stress. Whereas a vata pragrdi person, vata constitution person may have a lower stress because otherwise he may uh, end up with some uh, un unexpected behavior, uh, poor performances. There are so many things. So it's again depends upon our constitution, what we have. All right. Uh, very good. Thank you for that. And um, one or two more. Um, so um, an, an interesting uh, one would be, is there a, a different kind of treatment for the different dysfunctions of the thyroid? So, you know, you have the Hashimoto or hypothyroidism or something, or is it is it a basic treatment that you work on, or is it something standardized to, to uh, treat those? Yes, we have a standardized ways also. For example, uh, autoimmune thyroiditis like Hashimoto thyroiditis, where the problem is very different from the normal thyroiditis because there is an autoimmune activity. And autoimmune activity is much similar in Ayurveda, is that of a deep-rooted ama attachment. You know, when uh, there are cells uh, which is identifying the other cells an enemy, because there is a confusion in the intelligence between the cells. And this confusion is a byproduct of ama. You know, when we are tamas, you know, when we have tamasic situation, we will not be able to know what is right, what is wrong. So this situation happened. Such conditions need more aggressive, more rigorous type of procedures. We do some uh, ghee drinking, make some virechana, like loose motions, like virechana type of treatments, which was more competent. Even some vamana, vomiting, therapeutic vomiting is also very found very good uh, effective in Hashimoto thyroiditis. We, I personally, we prepared a strong uh, systematic protocol for different conditions, very systematic protocol. But again, within that we have a lot of, we need a lot of freedom to do this because it's again depends upon the prakriti of the person or the, you know, conditions uh, specific one. Very good, great, thank you. And uh, we get to the final one, which is maybe uh, um, specific more, um, but uh, you were saying uh, women are getting uh, these dysfunctions about six times um, as much as men. And um, the question is, um, you know, is, is it possible that, uh, um, you know, th there is, um, it, it's related to the energetic level of the throat chakra? Uh, uh, is there any uh, correlation to the chakras? And uh, because also, of course, that, that chakra would go to the communication. And um, is there, you know, some sort of, um, a sort of a connection that, women are very often not speaking their real truth or, or their heart out. And um, 
in in that case, if if you feel like there is any kind of um, scientific uh, basis for um, for that, what you what would you think they need to do, um, or um, is there is there an, an issue with with the feminine side of, of life or not speaking out or um, you know being stuck in 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 this fraud area uh, so far what i know there is no uh, established scientific explanation uh, to why women are prone for uh, larger number of women are prone for this disease but uh, as you rightly mentioned uh, there are also some changes in the chakras and other things. But Ayurveda says that there is a difference between men and women. Basically, man, men are called Sita Snigdha. They are cold and Snigdha. And women are Ushna Snigdha, hot and Snigdha. So women's body is more, uh, have a tendency to have Ushna slightly more than a male. So when we have Ushna is more, it is an advantage because their bodies uh, are the platform for reproduction. They are more closer to the, actually women are more closer to the nature than a man. <laughs> if at all nature says that I want to delete either men or women, definitely will nature will delete men. <laughs> because if woman is there, because it's close to the nature in many perspectives, many, many perspectives, because it, they have a capacity to reproduce. They have a very proximal to the earth, water, these type of components. And because of that reason itself, it, since they have stronger Agni, they are also vulnerable to have disturbance of that Agni. You know, when we have ad upper advantage, there is also possibility to have a opposite of that too. That, that's the reason I strongly believe this thing. But another point to be remembered is that as a practitioner, maybe we come up with so many cases. When it comes to the malignancies of situations in women and men, men are more having malignancy cancer much, much higher and uh, fatality rate is even double that of a woman. So the other side, it happening the other side is the thing. That's what I told. Nature may be choosing woman. <laughs> It's evening out. We're, we're dying more and <laughs> women are just uh, having that. So uh, please let me give you a, a final question which, which has been uh, posted on, on Facebook that seems to be important. If all the uh, laboratory values are normal, but signs of uh, hypothyroidism is seen clinically, um, how should we manage that? That's a very nice question. I used to get these type of cases uh, quite often. Uh, that is called, a sim in a modern medical science, they call subclinical hypothyroidism. Uh, but it's, uh, that situation is generally very simple. We just ignite the Agni in the proper way, but not only simply to correcting the food, we have to correct the lifestyle, we have to correct their uh, you know, daily regimes, etc. That is enough. Even a short period, maybe a few weeks, their TSH will, I mean, their symptoms will disappear. It's a problem of slow sedimentation of AMA in a different part of the body, manifesting that's a type of symptoms. <laughs>